TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The United States conducted an aerial strike against Iranian proxy militias in Syria overnight in response to the rocket fire against U.S.-led coalition forces in Iraq earlier this month. The U.S. 9th Air Force Commander, Lt. Gen. Gregory Gullit, concluded a first working visit to Israel. Hungary criticizes the European Union over its attitude toward Egypt. U.S. Air Force aircraft struck Iranian proxy militias in Syria overnight, killing at least 22 members of the Iraqi Popular Mobilization Forces, or Hashti Shabi in Arabic, including operatives of the Qatar Hezbollah and Qatayb Said al Shuhada militias, which operate under the directives of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Quds Force. At approximately 1 a.m., GMT plus 2, a heavy barrage of missiles launched from unidentified aircraft struck a convoy of trucks carrying a substantive amount of munitions upon entry into Syria from Iraq's Al Qaim border crossing, situated in the eastern Al Bukamal region. Local sources informed TV7 that heavy material damage was caused and that at least 22 Iranian-backed militants were killed, the majority of whom were identified as members of the Iraqi, Iranian proxy Qatayb Hezbollah, while further mentioning that the number of casualties is expected to rise. While initial reports were quick to attribute responsibility to the Israeli Air Force, these claims were subsequently refuted when, at roughly 5 a.m. Jerusalem time, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby released a statement that read, quote, At President Biden's direction, U.S. military forces earlier this evening conducted airstrikes against infrastructure utilized by Iranian-backed militant groups in eastern Syria. In a statement, Kirby further explained that these strikes were authorized in response to recent attacks against American and coalition personnel in Iraq in reference to the deadly rocket attack on U.S.-led coalition forces in Erbil International Airport, which claimed the life of one civilian contractor and wounded a number of others, including one American service member. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin addressed the matter upon departure from the Joint Base Andrews in Maryland, USA. We're confident in, uh, in the target that we went after. We know what we hit. Uh, and, uh, and we're confident that that target was being used by the same uh, Shia militia that, uh, that conducted the, the strikes. It is worth mentioning, to put things into perspective, that over the course of the last 72 hours alone, Russian fighter jets executed more than 300 airstrikes against Islamist terror targets throughout multiple locations in Syria. Separately, it is interesting to know that the U.S. 9th Air Force Commander, Lt. Gen. Gregory Gillett, concluded a first working visit to Israel yesterday, during which the commander of the Air Force component of CENTCOM, held a series of meetings with Israeli Air Force Commander Major General Amikam Nolkin. According to the IDF Spokespersons Unit, the purpose of the visit was to promote operational interests, continue to develop channels of cooperation, and to maintain and deepen the relationship between the U.S. and Israeli militaries. Turning to the Syrian capital Damascus, where Health Minister Hassan al-Rabash announced that a friend country had provided Syria a quantity of COVID vaccines for the purpose of inoculating the country's medical staff. العاملة في الجمهورية العربية السورية سيتم بداية الأسبوع القادم البدء بتطعيم الكادر الطبي ضد مرض كوفيد-19 
Well, the Syrian health ministry stopped short from elaborating on the source of delivery. TV7 managed to corroborate that the shipment of vaccines attained by Damascus were in fact delivered by Russia with Israeli financing. Israel had evidently agreed to fund the purchase of Russian vaccines for Syria, its longtime enemy to the north, in order to secure the release last week of an Israeli woman who had been held there after crossing into the war-torn country illegally. Alongside the funding of the referred to shipment, Damascus secured the release via Russian mediation of three individuals incarcerated in Israel, including two shepherds with suspected links to Hezbollah. The Israeli Prime Minister's office did not confirm nor deny this report in response to TV7's request for comment. It is important to highlight that the use of COVID vaccinations in both overt and covert diplomacy has become widespread throughout the Middle East in particular and around the world in general. With first and second world countries exploiting the lack of access by third world countries, which are eager to procure vaccines to combat the spread of the coronavirus disease. Therefore, at a time when the United States ratcheted up its criticism of both allies and strategic partners in the volatile region over, quote, humanitarian issues, China, in particular, is distributing significant quantities of its vaccinations to numerous countries throughout the Middle East, including Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Turkey and Egypt, among others. Staying in Cairo, where Egyptian Foreign Minister Samir Shukri hosted his Hungarian counterpart Peter Sijarto, during which they discussed a number of bilateral topics as well as Egypt's relations with the European Union. In a joint press conference that followed their meeting, the Hungarian top diplomat seized the opportunity to criticize the European Commission for setting conditions for Cairo's access to EU funds without taking into consideration the country's internal and international security interests amid a stringent battle against Islamist terrorism. Brüsszel és több nyugat-európai bevándorláspárti politikus is azt állítja, hogy tengeri útvonalon nem megállítható a migráció. Egyiptom bebizonyította, hogy de igen, lehetséges, csak akarni kell, és előfeszítéseket kell tenni, na meg persze pénzt kell költeni. És ugye Egyiptom ezzel nagy szolgálatot tesz egész Európának, főleg most, hogy az illegális bevándorlásnak komoly egészségügyi kockázatai is vannak. Ezért Egyiptom minden támogatást megérdemel az Európai Uniótól, ezért tiltakozunk az ellen, hogy az Európai Bizottság politikai feltételekhez kösse a támogatások kifizetését Egyiptom számára. Nekünk igenis figyelembe kell venni Egyiptom belső biztonsági érdekeit, és ennek figyelembevételével negatív politikai kondicionalitás nélkül kell biztosítanunk Egyiptom támogatását, mert ha Egyiptom az elmúlt hat évben nem tett volna ilyen erőfeszítéseket az illegális migrációs hullámok megállítása érdekében, akkor mi Európában még a mostaninál is jóval nehezebb helyzetben lennénk. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up the Philippines in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. Separately, I would like to once again thank all of you who partner with TV7 Israel. Your dedicated monthly support, both by means of prayer and finance, is of crucial importance for our ongoing operations. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Chag Purim Sameach and Shabbat Shalom. We will see you again on Monday at the same time.